Hey peeps, and welcome to Sparrow Springs. My name is Sarah. I'm going to show you how I made this phone wallpaper in Procreate. This is called a photo manipulation or photo bash. You can also get this wallpaper for free. Click the link in the description and put your email in and it's all yours. Now let's get started. First things first, I'm going to collect some photos. I'm using unsplash.com and I'm going to select a few photos and start roughly piecing them together. I do like to start off with a sketch for general composition just so I know where I'm going. Right off the bat, this is where things can get a little controversial. I don't know how people operate now, but in the past, concept artists may have just grabbed any old Google image and used it for a texture or an element. And I've heard other professionals talk about this and how the companies they work for don't really care as long as the job got done. And most of the time, these images were unrecognizable by the time they got done with a photo bash. Photo bashing was a huge advantage in that it can really speed up the process of creating a concept for a video game or a movie. Of course, the issue comes up copyrighted images. Luckily, now we have so many resources available to us where not only can you get royalty free images, but people are actually creating images specifically for photo bashing. Anyways, onwards. <laughs> Once I get my images placed, I'm going to cut them all out so that I don't have to worry about this later. I didn't record all of this because it does get rather monotonous after a while, so I will sum up with just a few tips. First, I use the eraser or the masking tool instead of automatic selection. This gives you a lot more control of just what is removed, especially if the background is rather busy. A lot of times, uh, leaves and twigs in the wrong place can mean that too much is removed or you have a lot of cleanup to do at the end. The edges can also be rather jagged even if you choose to feather the selection a little bit. I did end up using automatic selection a little bit but only when I knew I was going to be heavily editing the photo and if the photo was exceptionally clean. Like the solid black background of the goldfish. Which brings me to tip number two. If there are a lot of details to cut out, like the grassy hill in the foreground, it's a lot easier to cut out more and paint things back in later. I will end up cutting off excess branches, grass, brush, fur, hair, anything that could be extremely tedious, but there's a way to preserve some of that texture so you have a guide when you come back to it. Which brings me to point number three, edge control. Choose the brush that best fits your edge. If you have a sharp edge, use a more solid brush to erase or mask. If your edge is blurred or more furry, then use a softer edge brush. When I erase around the meerkat, I'm using the medium airbrush and erasing just enough so that the background is mostly faded out, but I can still see some of the edges of the fur, or at least the direction it's going. Now that I have all my pieces cut out and generally placed, then I'm going to go through all of them and adjust the color using curves. If you have not seen my other video that goes more in depth on how to use curves, you can check that out in the link in the description. It can be a little weird to get used to, but in very simple terms, you can adjust gamma, which controls light and dark values, red adjusts the red to cyan scale, green adjusts green to magenta, and blue adjusts blue to yellow. The biggest thing to remember is the point on the upper right controls your light values and the bottom left controls your dark values. Um, colors, uh, this feature acts very similarly and if you slide the point around you'll get a sense of just what it does. This really just takes some practice. This allows me to fine tune all of the colors to make it more cohesive. Right now I'm just concerned about the colors and not so much about the lighting. As long as everything is fairly similar in contrast, then later I will start drawing in my shadows and highlights. So a little about this composition, most of the photo manipulations I have done on this channel are really nighttime scenes, and there's two reasons for that. First, it's a little easier to remove contrast and make a nighttime scene. Um, second, I just like how they look. <laughs> But knowing that I had done a few of those already, I wanted to get out of my little rut and do a daytime scene. And a little bit of creature design concept art, which gave me two challenges to work through. First, making all of these different elements match up and look like the light was all coming from the same direction. And second, the creature's up close, so I need to make sure that all of the seams of my stock photos blend in so they look like they belong there. 
When I adjust my lighting, I want to choose a direction where my light is coming from, and then everything on that side will be painted over with a light layer on overlay. And the opposite side will be painted over with a layer on multiply. This isn't perfect, but it gets us a lot closer where we need to be. And then I can paint in some finishing details to make it a little bit more believable. In this scenario, I have chosen to work from my background and move forward because if I can figure out what I'm doing with my background, then I know exactly how to fit my subject into the environment. I did fight with this quite a bit because it just didn't look right. I wanted some really bright background to offset the subject, almost like the sun was behind him. So I did break off and go look at some reference images for lighting scenario before I came back. The other thing that was really throwing me for a loop was the depth. So I created several layers of the background and erased a little more each time and tried to create this depth of field effect so each plane got a little bit more clear as you get closer to the subject. Then I started to add my light in. Before I started, I had this image in my head of having a little creature sitting in the foreground with a lot of really warm pinks and bright lighting. So as I choose a color for my light, I want it to be in the yellow range. Once I nailed down my lighting scheme, it becomes a lot more clear what I need to do on the other elements. So I work on the background elements. I'm using a dark purple color on multiply for my shadow layer. And I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this because you can waste a lot of time on your background. And in the end, it just draws your attention away from your subject. So don't overwork your background. Then I continue my way forward and hit all of my plant-like elements. I still want kind of a fantasy feel to this, so I chose some more exotic looking plants and made them a little bigger than you would think they would be. Since the light is coming from behind, most of these elements will be backlit and you will have a strong rim light around these objects. Same thing, I take my dark purple to create the shadows. Up close, this doesn't look quite right and you can tell that I am editing a photo that had a different light pattern, but when you zoom out, it comes together. And again, this is not our main focus, so I don't want to put too much into it, just enough to bring the composition together. I'm using a lot of digital painting techniques to bring everything all together. I'm only using really four primary brushes and all of them come with Procreate. I'm using the soft airbrush, the medium airbrush, and when I get more into the grass and hair, I use the reed brush and the sable brush. Don't overcomplicate this. You don't need all the fancy brush packs. Not to say that you can't use them or shouldn't, but the brush doesn't make the art. Think about what you're trying to accomplish and experiment with different brushes. I'm really used to the brushes in Photoshop, so I lean more into the airbrush pack. What you may find is that different brushes may speed up your workflow or make the process more enjoyable, but the brushes in Procreate are all very good. As I move into my main subject, I can be a lot more detailed and think about how I want to bring the focus in. So I start off by making sure the main lighting is painted in, and I'm going to really think about how the different pieces fit together. I like the idea of having a peacock tail, but I need to think about how it would actually connect. Guys, don't just slap something together and hope it fades into the next object. You can sort of do that with the background, but not with the elements that are a main focal point. So I decided I want the feathers to start coming in around the haunches and the fur is layered right over top. So we will have a little bit of a darker shadow right where it meets. I need to think about this with every element that I add. Now, when I grab my goldfish, I can start placing him. Um, here's another really cool tip for you guys. You don't need hundreds of stock photos. I'm using the same fins multiple times. I warp them, flip them, size them differently. The shadows will be different based on where they're sitting. Some people will actually create a whole different composition with only one photo. Learn to experiment. Again, I do the same thing thinking about how those fins join to my little meerkat and layering more fur on top of it. I also erase a little bit here and there so the fins look a little transparent. Really work the lighting, make it consistent, and also realize that these elements will cast their own shadows. Light will sell it faster than anything else. You can play with the size, color, but if your light is off, people can see it. You'll notice with both the grass and the peacock tail, I spent a bit of time painting things back in. 
first so that I didn't have to cut around each blade of grass or feather strand, but also I can draw these back in with the right kind of lighting. I would have painted over all of this anyways. Don't forget your bounce light, guys. Bounce light is like sprinkles on a cupcake. It's just fun and adds so much to a picture. I didn't go crazy on the bounce light, but one of my favorite things is to use a contrasting color for bounce light. Here it's a bit more subtle because my color scheme is a bit more monochromatic and I thought he would look super cute with these almost like antenna like whiskers. I continued to add the details throughout wherever I feel like it could add just a little bit more interest. As we get to the final stages, I'm going to create a color dodge layer and add a few little hot spots, which I love. These are so satisfying. <laughs> Finally, I copy the canvas and I will edit the colors all together. I want to bring out the warmth in the lighting and cool down my shadows a little more. I tend to take my contrast down a little and lighten it up because I find that my iPad makes things look a little different. So when I post it online, it looks too dark. I did come back a little later and move the plant that was right behind my creature because I felt like the silhouette was fighting too much with the fins on him. So a little extra adjustments were in order. So this is just some of the things that I work through when I create a photo bash in Procreate. I hope you all learned something. Remember, you can get this phone wallpaper for free. Just click the link in the description and enter your email. If you're worried about giving me your email, don't worry, I don't spam. I barely ever send out emails unless it's super exciting news, which you wouldn't want to miss anyways. So that's all for now, peeps. Hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video.